and welcome. My name is Eric Lantris, and today we're going to be talking about how to be featured on top of Google. Specifically, we're going to focus on how to be featured in the search snippet that Google has on top of most results. So let's dive right into it. We're going to be covering how search snippet rankings really work. I'm going to show you how to outrank everyone else's search snippet. We're going to be going over ranking factors, exact code, specific responses to uh, basically get your search snippet up there. And also we're going to be going over advanced search snippet tweaking and troubleshooting should you have any issues. So it's really a complete guide, a complete course. If you want to know how to do search snippets, this is the guide for you. So search snippets, as you can see, this is it's the answer that appears on top of Google search result. A lot of people call this rank number zero. So you have the organic listings below and this is really the first thing that people see and it takes up most of the page. So it's very, very good to have and nearly every single Google search term these days has a search snippet result. And if it doesn't have a search snippet result, a lot of times you could almost uh, trick it into getting a search snippet result. So as far as I'm concerned, the search snippet is the new number one result. Um, so what we're going to be going over is basically how you could take over the top section of the page. Here you have, it basically takes up half the page. Here it takes up more than half the page. And here, even when there's crazy amounts of advertisement, this is the first thing you'll see. You can't, you know, uh, if the people are paying money to be there, this is the first thing you'll see. But then this is, if you're not here, you're basically, um, you're not ranking in Google. You're not basically, no one's gonna see your listing. This is the only organic listing available. This is your free traffic. And in fact, this takes up most of the page. So it really attracts attention from users looking for a reputable source of information. It, they actually trust the search snippet even more. So. Um, how crazy is that? This is the impact that a search sni uh, snippet could have on your rankings. Here we were doing a case study inside traffic research where I show people how to rank for search snippets step by step. You're kind of like watching over my shoulder. And here I did the improvements and optimizations. In less than 24 hours, we got that search snippet and then we got a ranking boost for that, that individual search snippet. It actually resulted in a 31% increase in traffic in 24 hours just from applying these methods. So this is what we're going over today. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you so you could start replicating all of this. Okay, so how does the search snippet work? Well, the search snippet uses artificial intelligence and it looks for patterns of information, facts, and special entities to gather information about like what the answer is. So basically Google search engine, the artificial intelligence is looking for answers to the questions that people are asking. So if you could provide Google with a formula of content that it recognizes, basically you could feed the AI what it's looking for, it's going to accept your answer and it's gonna show your answer. So essentially the Google artificial intelligence is not super smart yet. They're, they're, they're getting there, but it's not super smart yet. And that's why we can, predictably feed it information that I know it's going to respond favorably for. So here's a real world example. This is a web page, uh, one of the web pages I put together where we have the best Samsung Gear VR controller chart. And you basically format it in a very specific way. And this is what it looks like on your page. But then the way Google basically takes your information and creates a search snippet is going to look like this. You can see how it took the title from the web page, it put it as a title here. It took the item names here and it put the names here. Same thing with the table and it even took the same image and kind of put it right over here. So if you feed it the right information, it's very easy and predictable to get Google to just show that on the search results when they're, when people are looking for that. All right. So as I mentioned, this is one of the most important things you could do because you're going to get a, like a giant double listing. Um, sometimes you'll have the big number one search snippet and then you could have another like listing right here. You could almost take over three quarters of the page. And as I mentioned, people just trust this more because Google selected the search snippet. Google selected this site. Uh, the user assumes that, okay, well, if Google trusts this site, then I guess we should trust this site as well. So if you're selling anything, you're doing any affiliate or e-commerce e or anything like that, this is a very, very strong selling proposition because people are going to click on yours more and they're also going to trust it more. All right. So moving on, um, how do this search snippet rankings work? So what does Google decide that uh, goes on top and how do they decide? Well, what most people don't know and realize is that search snippets also have rankings. So you know how you have normal rankings one to 10 on Google and they throw the first 10 organic listings? Well, what they do is there's also search snippet rankings. So Google will go and they rank all the, the potential answers, all the potential search snippets, and then the best ranking one will end up being on top, number one, 
and then you got number two, number three, number four, number five, and so forth. And what happens is you could actually, uh, what you need to do is you need to beat the best result. You need to beat the best search snippet if you want to rank number one. If you want to see the number two, number three, number four result, there's an actual trick that I'm about to share with you is you just need to block the first site. So you search whatever keyword you're searching for and then you do minus site and whatever site is in the search snippet right here. And then, so for example, you do how to make a pie and then you, like, you block the site, the kitchen. And then what that's gonna do is once you block the first result here, it's gonna show you number two. So you're gonna be able to see what the second one is. So this becomes really useful to know and how to, to be able to do this if your website is in contention for the search snippet. So if you're like, oh, how far am I from the number one spot of the search snippet? You need to start blocking the sites to see if you're even in, in contention. So um, you basically have site number one, site number two, and you could basically continue all the way down the list. You could add, you could block more sites, more sites, more sites, and you could get your rankings from one to like 10 of like which search snippets Google prefers. So this is gonna give you a list of the search snippets and show you if you're in the position to replace number one. Because the way it works is if number one is removed, then the number two result replaces it. Let me show you how it works. So you have a whole bunch of search snippets that are potential that Google is considering. So they're considering all these search snippets and they're like, oh, well, we think this is the best answer. What happens is if you come up with a better answer, let's say number two becomes the better answer because you followed this guide and you, you updated your search snippet. Then what happens is number two becomes the number one and everything kind of moves up. So that's, that's basically what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking your website, we're going to be changing the content on your website, updating, modifying, improving the content on your website so that you can get the search snippet. All right, so how to rank for specific queries by answering questions. This is the major, major philosophy behind ranking for search snippets. This is what you need to do. And if you don't listen to anything else, just remember this and you'll be okay. All right, so what you need to remember is you need, must answer the questions. Um, the question, when you see a query, whatever people are typing into Google, some people call this keyword, some people call this just normal search terms, you have to transform whatever people are typing into questions, into just transform whatever's here in terms of your keyword into a question and then answer that question and you have, you're going to be, uh, you're probably going to have better odds of being in the search snippets. So. Take this, for example, best movies of all time. This is a normal search term that people type in every single day. But if you want to get into the search snippets, what you have to pretend that people are asking is what are the best movies of all time? And on your web page, you end up answering that question. Then you're going to be in the search snippets. So let's take another example. Amazon Prime Review. What are people asking? You have to transform this search query into a question and answer that question on your web page. What is the verdict of the Amazon Prime Review? Moving on, office cleaning marketing idea. Office cleaning marketing ideas. What are some office cleaning marketing ideas? I'm really trying to push it here and show you that you have to transform everything into questions and then really answer the questions. Even things like uh, omniprazole side effect long term uh, effects long term. What are the long term side effects of omniprazole? Transform everything you have into questions, answer those questions on your website, and then you're going to be ranking into search snippets. Really, honestly, it comes down to that. It's not that hard, it's not that simple, but there are specific ways of doing it. So like, as I mentioned, Google understands them better and you know, says, oh, I think I prefer this answer. All right, so same thing, more thing, uh, muscle food discount code, what is a muscle food discount code? Sometimes there's different answers and you could basically play around or answer both of them and you'll be perfectly fine. All right, so question plus answer equals the snippet. So how do you transform this? What are the best movies of all time? You answer the best movies of all time are, and then you have a list of movies, and then you get a giant listing and the search snippets. So same thing here. What are the omniprazole side effects? You basically answer the side effects are heartburn, acid flu or acid reflux, GERD, and all that. And you basically answer, and that's going to give you the Google listing. So Google is searching for specific patterns to determine what the answer is, and that how that's how the search snippet uh, comes to be. So these answer patterns can be anywhere on your page. So Google gets the information from your page. And as I, like, as I just said, they can pretty much be anywhere on the page. It doesn't need to be right at the top. It doesn't need to be 
in your code. It doesn't need to be in a specific like uh, meta code or anything. I, it could be anywhere on the page. As long as Google finds it and crawls it, they'll, they, it's in contention. However, it, testing has shown that the higher up it is, the more priority you will get. So if you have a giant page, like a 3,000 word page or 4,000 word page, try to put your snippet, your answer uh, format near the top. You're going to have better chances. Google's going to give that a bit more priority. So that's another trick that you could write down and start using right away. And what you want to do is you want to laser focus the answer in one single uh, one single se section as well. So um, let's say you're, uh, the people are asking, what is uh, the best food, right? I don't know. It's a weird question. But if you start answering it a bit near at the top, a bit in the middle, a bit at the end, Google won't really understand. You have to put like you laser focus all the answers, all the question, all the words that relate to the answer in one very specific area. And then Google is going to pick up that area and say, oh, this is the answer, right? So if you just write a whole article about it, it won't be uh, Google is going to get lost and confused. You really have to answer in a very specific area, having everything together. Okay, so here are some patterns, as I've been mentioning, that Google understands and even favors for search snippets. So as I, as I first mentioned, the artificial intelligence is still at the early stages, and they're looking for specific patterns that they understand. Here are some patterns that Google absolutely loves. So one is going to be having a headline, a paragraph of, of text, a small little picture here. Google absolutely loves this. And the next one is going to be a table. So Google absolutely loves tables. A headline, put a table here, put a small picture. Google's like, oh, I, I get this. An ordered list is another one where you have a headline, a list of items, and a small picture. Google says, oh, this must be a really good answer for, let's say, how to. So like, how to do this? Well, step one, step two, step three, and so forth. Um, moving on, you even have unordered lists for other terms. Sometimes this is very useful. Google understands this. And then even paragraph hierarchies. So you have one major paragraph, and then you have a paragraph of text, an image, a subheadline, an image. This one's a bit more complicated, but Google, for um, advanced search terms, they really understand this very well, and they use this in many, many areas. All right, so here are some patterns. And now that I've kind of gone over the general patterns that you could use on your site, I'm going to give you actual examples. I'm going to give you exact code that you could use, you could copy-paste onto your site. So here's... The template for the table. So you could literally copy paste this code, um, answers your keyword chart, and you could copy paste this code into your into your on your page. You replace whatever the answer is, you replace whatever the description is, and you could put your items here and you put an image that is relevant, and you're gonna have a good chance of ranking in the search snippets. Um, here's another example. This is a paragraph. This is the exact code that I use to basically provide Google with paragraph answers that will rank in the search snippet. Here's another example, a list template of exact code that you could use whenever people, uh, Google is looking for a list to rank in the search snippets. Now, I'm going through all of these right now, and here's even a paragraph hierarchy. This is how, what it looks like. Now, I'm going all the, through all of this. I'm going through this a bit quickly because you could download all my code or your code. This is your code. You could download all your code, yeah, the, all the traffic research code snippets in a PDF in a description below. So I'm just going to give this out to you. Um, trying to give you value. Download all the code right now. So even though I went through the slides fast, you could download my code, download your code, uh, copy paste, and you could use that as much as you want. All right. So here's a specific example of the code in action and a search snippet uh, in action as well. If you want to rank for a how-to query, so let's say how to tie a tie. Well, what Google really is looking for is going to be the um, subheadline with the lists. So they really like this this format of answers. What I do is I will do H2, which is my subheadline, how to tie a tie. Then I'm gonna have an image and I'm gonna name this image whatever the question is. So if it's how to tie a tie, this will be like how to tie a tie.jpg. And then I'm gonna have number one step and I'm gonna have the list. I'm gonna have number two, I'm gonna have the second step, number three, second step, four, five, fifth, six, as many steps are necessary. And this is the format that I found that Google prefers the most whenever they're looking for how-to answers. See, whenever we're looking for, for we want to rank in search snippets, there are different types of search terms, there are different types of questions, there are different types of answers, and for each one of them, um, Google is looking for slightly different code. Now, inside traffic research, I actually cover the what works best for different queries. So if you see my full uh, feature on search snippets inside traffic research, 
I will tell you which uh, which type of code to use in which instance. So if there's different uh, types of code I would use for top, for reviews, for lists, and so forth. So um, ultimately, it all comes down to one really powerful format. In every single way, every sort of a single search snippet, we're always basically doing one thing. We're answering the main, uh, answering the keyword with our headline. So whatever the answer is, that ends up being our headline. Then we answer um, the content. We put our, our answer in the content. So let's say how to how to tie a tie. My sub headline will be this is how you tie a tie. And then in the answer, I'm going to say step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. And then I'm going to have an image in the file name. So every single answer usually revolves around this formula. So one main headline, an answer, an image with the file name. Very very cool. And you could put this pretty much anywhere on your page but near the top gives you a bit more priority. Cool. So um, here's kind of a bonus. In terms of the image, I did a bit of digging and Google actually recommends an ideal image size. They prefer a three by four ratio aspect. And if it's um, a thousand pixels wide, that actually, that actually works for Google. Even though Google won't show that big of an image, that was the recommended image that Google came back to me with. Um, so that, I thought that was pretty interesting. I figured it'd give you kind of a, a bonus here. Also, they tend to prefer PNGs. Um, so if you want to improve your chances that just that much more, having a PNG um, might actually just help you just a bit more than having a JPEG. Although def I have definitely seen tons and tons and tons of JPEGs ranking as well. Okay, so here's how you write the headline that answers a question asked by your search snippet. So as I mentioned over and over again, whenever there is a question in the search term, you have to transform that and you have to basically take the search term, transform it into a question, and then answer it as a headline. So your H2, typically this will be your subheadline. So if we're asking, what are the best movies of all time? The possible answers, and there are many possible answers, could be the best movies of all times are, list of the best movies of all time are, here are the best movies of all time. What I typically do is I make it blatantly obvious. I really, really, like I spoon feed this to Google. I don't try to trick them. I don't try to make complicated subheadlines. I don't try to be elaborate or, or funny or quirky or anything like that. I just I try to provide the most straightforward answer with a little to no guesswork. So moving on, here's another example. Omniprazole side effects long term. So remember how we were transferring, transforming this into a question? We're like, oh, what are the side effects? Well, here are the possible answers are the long-term side effects of omniprazole are two dots and then you start your answer list of side of uh, the list of long-term side effects of omniprazole omniprazole long long-term side effect chart omniprazole long-term uh, long-term side effects all of these make it perfectly clear that you're going to go into side effects so if google's searching for an answer for that they're going to find you they're likely going to find it under that subheadline. and last Amazon Prime review could be like the conclusion of our Amazon Prime review. So if you're going, if you're an affiliate, you're going for any review terms, this is typically how I will answer it. The conclusion, our verdict, recommendations. These are kind of like the keywords that I'm going to put in my subheadlines to really tell Google this is this is where your answer is it. Okay, so what determines if your search snippet ranks on Google? There's ranking factors for your search snippets. So here are the ranking factors for search snippets. Remember when I was I just told you there was ranking number one, number two, number three, number four, and so forth. Here are the ranking factors. So ranking factors, uh, number one is the quantity of facts that you present in the answer. So if you answer only with only one fact and your competitors have four facts inside their answer, they will have the more complete answer. So Google's gonna prefer them, it may make sense. The second thing is a quantity of trigger words. And these typically are the related entities um, that the more trigger words and more words that Google recognizes, they're going to rank your search snippet higher. Next is going to be the relevance of the page. So if your page is all about that, that question, they're more likely to rank your, um, your, your search snippet. Also, you basically when uh, Google thinks that your page is relevant, you're going to be ranking higher in the organic listings and that's gonna help you as well. Finally, the freshness of the answer. I found that these answers change quite frequently and typically the fresher answer will have some sort of priority. So 
Essentially, when Google looks at all these ranking factors, the one with the highest relevance score, the one that ranks the highest, that satisfies all of these, is the one that's going to be in the number one position. And the best thing about this is you could play around with it as much as you want until you get that number one position. It is some, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to game. Okay, so let's get into the ranking factors just a bit more. So you could get that number one ranking uh, spot even if someone else is currently there. Google looks for the answer with the most facts. So it understands statements um, such as the CEO of the company is Eric. The best fish fishing pole is the Basemaster 2000. A side effect of uh, a side effect of caffeine is jitterness. Um, these statements have a very very simple structure. Um, this is that. This is that. Um, side effect is this. These very very simple statements is are, are things that Google currently understands. Just the artificial intelligence understands this and if you've ever seen what is it the watson competition on jeopardy you're going to see how far artificial intelligence has come where the artificial intelligence understands uh, entities they understand the facts they basically crawl through text and start to understand what you're trying to say of course it reads at a grade school school level so you have to make these things really 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 clear when you're presenting facts as soon as you start getting really complicated with your sentence structure, it's going to screw them up and they, they won't be sure. So if you have to write in a very, very um, like a grade school level in order for uh, in order to rank in the search snippets. So next thing is going to be the quantity of trigger words. So Google looks for trigger words. And in fact, this is the secret ingredient. This is the strongest ranking factor and it's one of the most important ones if you want to rank in the search snippets. The more related words are inside the answer, the higher the score. So you almost want to keyword stuff the answer with trigger words. So for instance, if we have the keyword or search term Bell Satellite Packages, what I would do is I say the Bell Satellite Package uh, TV package includes channel bundles such as NBC, Showtime, CNN, Fox News, the Comedy Network. All of these things are trigger words that Google recognizes that tells Google, oh, this section is really, really, really about Bell Satellite TV packages. The promotional deals, which is another trigger word, includes a discount for Bell Telephone with up to five televisions. Everything in purple here is going to be a trigger word. Now, inside Traffic Research, the members area, I teach a proven formula to find all the best trigger words to catapult your search uh, snippet to number one. This is really cool stuff. Um, that basically helps you rank almost any search snippet at the top of uh, Google. And this is really what you want to do is get all the related words for that individual keyword. So obviously for different keywords, it varies. If you're talking about side effects to uh, aspirin or something, you're not going to have promotional deals or Bell satellite package. It doesn't make sense. Every single keyword has its own set of trigger words and you want to put the most trigger words as possible inside your answer in order to get the best, uh, best rankings. Finally, um, you got relevance of the page. So your page has to be relevant to the query, uh, the query of the, that Google listing. So typical results, typically uh, number one to number eight are going to be the best ones to uh, rank for if you want to get in a search snippet. If you're on page two or page three or page four, you typically won't get the search snippet. You really need to be on the first page, and usually number one to number eight is going to be the best. And for some reason, it actually seems to work better to be in number two, three, or four. For some reason, number one doesn't hurt, but I don't know why, but Google just seems to reward number two, three, and four even more. So that's typically where you want to be ranking. And last but not least, freshness. So Google wants the latest answer. So if an answer is changed, um, Google is going to go after that and try to give that uh, priority in a search snippet. And what the beauty of this is if your search snippet is not doing well, you're not ranking a search snippet, just update your page, update the answer, and that's automatically going to give you a boost. Awesome. So here's a trick for near instant search snippet rankings. I'm going to wrap this up right now. What you do is you optimize your page. You optimize your page by answering the query. You could use some of the exact code I, I gave you. You could download the PDF below and then find all the trigger words, find all the related words, get the page ranking. And once you're there, um, well, you could go to Webmaster Tools. You could do crawl, fetch as Google, and then you could do crawl this URL only. So basically you put whatever URL you created the answer on. You do fetch and render, render then you click submit. And within minutes, 
your Google is going to recrawl your page and then put you in contention for search snippets. It actually, I've done this in less than like, was it like 10 minutes we had the search snippets. So we went from not, not, not being there at all to having half the front page with a search snippet within like a few minutes. It was absolutely insane. And this is the fastest way to basically get exposure on Google. So what do you do if you're being outranked? Well, the best way to do is to up your rankings. You might, your search snippet might be number three or number four. And because Google found that there's other search snippets that are better than yours, they're currently ranking those instead of yours. So what you do is you add more trigger words and more facts to your snippet. What you want to do also is answer the question in a very uh, clear way. Think third grade reading level. You, whatever answer you have, make it as clear as possible. So Google, uh, Google's robot, Google's artificial intelligence has a very easy time of understanding it. Next thing is you wanna make sure you add a relevant image if you don't have one already. Make sure that image has the file name, name, whatever the question is. So if we're talking about uh, cable deals and name your image cabledeals.jpg or .png even better. Next, build additional high quality links to increase your organic rankings. This is another factor. If Google is comparing two pages and one has more authority than the other, then they're probably gonna take the answer from the page with the most authority. Inside traffic research members area, you get access to the link vault, which has a collection of high authority links, training videos on how to get the strongest links on the internet and proven techniques that pretty much no one else is using for getting backlinks. So if you're missing those backlinks, traffic research is it's really where you want to be, honestly. All right. So the result after you do all this is you end up taking over the search snippet. You end up taking an entire top page of pretty much every single Google result. It's absolutely insane. You could even push out existing search snippet results with your own. So how crazy is that? You could get your fair traffic, like I showed. This was a case study we did in side traffic research where we made the optimization improvements to our search snippet. And within, what was it, like 48 hours, we refreshed it, we took over a search snippet and we got a significant traffic increase. People inside traffic research, this is not just me doing this, people inside traffic research have been doing this for a while now and they're actually getting a ton of rankings. Boom, got one another one of these. Um, who knew the placement was, could be so important? This is actually when we discovered that the placement at the top, if you put your search snippet at the top, it has a much higher priority. This person actually ended up um, was struggling at first because they were putting the search snippet at the bottom of like a 4,000 word article. We moved it, we went back and forth, back and forth. We moved it towards the top and then within like hours, he had a search snippet rankings. Awesome. So uh, if you combine this search snippet with the traffic research on page templates, authority links, traffic research, user experience, these are all the major ranking factors on Google. You could absolutely dominate with your website. So if you guys are interested, check out Retract Research. Uh, you can even quickly launch a new business, uh, the, a new site that drives your business. We have a lot of success stories inside traffic research. People are absolutely loving it. So um, if you want your new opportunity, you wanna learn how to get traffic and sales and leads in a different way, check out Traffic Research. Uh, it's my site. I'm having a big promo right now. And uh, yeah, so if you have questions, comments, like and subscribe, leave them for more. My name is Eric Lanches. Here's how you do search snippets. And I'm going to see you inside. I'm always hanging out inside the Traffic Research snippet area. Uh, come say hi.